What's up guys, Ten Central 505 here. So I'm doing a little something different here. Um, instead of really running trains today, I want to talk to, to talk about trains today. Um, and now before we begin, I want to let you guys know that this is all going to be made in one tool. So if I stutter a lot or anything, I'm sorry. But anyway, so I want to talk to you guys about buying trains on eBay. And I will say, it can be pretty wild on eBay. You can either find a really good deal or you can find something just downright atrocious. Anyway, so what, what sparked this idea for me was Menard's release of their transparent hopper car. Um, it's a hopper car with a clear body and has lights in it. Retails for $35, right? Well, it did until it sold out. Um, and I, when I heard about it, I heard about it late. And I was like, ah, I gotta find, I gotta find myself one now. So I went on eBay and didn't, I originally searched, didn't find anything, but a couple days later, results started showing up. And they are atrocious. There are three up on eBay right now. One for $80, another one for $79, and one for almost $90. That is, all of those are more than double the price of what that car retails for. Why? And then on top of that, they wanted to make you pay for shipping. Why? Why? Why do people do this? This is like, and it annoys me when people do this because they know that they're trying to rip people off. And the thing is, like, these cars look like they haven't even been run. Like, one of them is still literally sealed in the box. Like, this is like, this is, in a way, like the PS5 and Xbox Series X release. When those consoles first got released, people were buying them up like crazy and then trying to sell them not unopened for double, triple the price. This is like that, but on a much, much smaller scale. Why do people do this? This annoys the hell out of me. Moving on. Um, when buying train stuff, always, always look, look at prices. Some prices can be downright insane. Like this Marks thing here. Um, this is a, what is it? It's a Marks 400, or no, it's a 490 and a couple of freight cars. And some track too. And a transformer. Usually you'll find this at a train show for like maybe 20, maybe $30 if they're really trying to push it. On eBay, this is selling for $520. Well, they're asking $520 for it. And get this, the engine and everything in here, for the most part, is pretty beat up. I mean, the two cars, the flat car and the gondola, are in okay shape, but everything else is just beat to hell, especially the engine. Who in their right mind thinks that this Usually going for twenty to thirty dollars. Who in their right mind thinks that this is this is worth five hundred and twenty dollars? Who in their right mind thinks someone will pay five hundred and twenty dollars for that? There is no one who will pay five hundred and twenty dollars for it. Now they they do say here you can it's five hundred and twenty dollars for a best offer. And honestly, and and on top of this, they're asking fifteen dollars shipping. Who people that now this is something that I see a sign of, and that is someone who doesn't know what they have. Um, because they just say vintage mark streamlined steam type of train. Old. It's not streamlined, it is old, but it is not rare, and it's not worth $520. Something that would be worth $520 would be like a brand new engine made with Legacy. 
something like that. But this is not worth $520. And this is a sign, like I said, of someone who doesn't know what they have. They see it, they fit, they, they see it, haven't really seen it before, and it's old, so they think it, they automatically think that it's rare, so they're gonna ask an, an outrageous price. I don't like people who do that. At least, people need, when selling stuff, need to at least do some reason. Just a little bit. And, like, if they, if these people here just did a little bit of research on what they have here, they probably would have listed it for, like, 20, 30 bucks. Another example here, we got more marks. And this is a very outrageous example. So this person here has a Mark's Bell Crossing. It's one of those crossing uh, signs that has the ring bell, right? And it had they have also in this a one of those searchlight towers with the two searchlights. These these are not rare. Typically go for like five, ten dollars. If, you're, if it's in nice condition, they are asking $1,700. Who in their right mind thinks that this is worth $1,700? Again, this is a sign of this. I see as a sign of they don't know what they have, and they 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 automatically think that oh, it's rare. It's going to sell for an outrageous amount of money. No, this is not worth $1,700. This package total is worth about 10, 15, 20 bucks a day. And don't get me wrong, these are in great shape. But, it, but again, these things are ex very common and go for a very low price. It's not like it's gonna, it's not like it's some holy grail engine, like a 700E or something. That's not that. It's, a, Crossing a crossbuck with a bell and a searchlight tower that were made in the thousands, thousands. Anyway, moving on. Here's a, another set. This is a Lionel number 2026, and it has track, uh, freight cars, and whatnot, and transform and all that. And, Honestly, I don't even think this is the right transformer for this set. There's no box or anything. Everything is beat to hell. And they're asking $1,200. This is not a $1,200 set. This is not a rare set. Nothing in nothing in this is rare. You find 2026 is pretty often. And... Hell, I have one. Let me grab it for you. I have a 2026. This is not a $1,200 engine. I, and I don't get why people are, think that it's reasonable to ask an insane price for something. For something that isn't even that rare. Again, I think this might be another case where the, the person selling it doesn't know what they have and therefore thinks it's rare. And To all, and I get, I get it. Not everybody's a train collector, and not everybody is is into collecting trains like me or you. But if people can just do at least the bare minimum and do a little bit of research to see what they have, and heck, maybe even ask around, say like, "Hey, is this? How much is this worth?" That's people need to do that. It, it really really boggles my mind how people think that this is this is okay and like looking at this set too looking at this you can't even make a full loop track they have what four pieces of 072 which doesn't even make a go doesn't even make half a circle they have what looks to be five ish pieces of what is that 036 something like that Again, not you're not even gonna be able to make a full circle. And then two straights and a uh, uncoupled track, which doesn't even have the remote for it. Like again, 
who in their right mind thinks this is gonna sell for twelve hundred twelve hundred dollars? This it, it just it just blows my mind how people think that this is a good price. Uh, another example here. Now, also when buying trains, you have to you have to watch out for shipping prices because sometimes shipping is outrageous. This Lionel Honda Flyer set. Now, I will admit, these are not easy sets to find. I would like to find one one day. They're not easy sets to find. And this one is fact so factory sealed. So I would say maybe $600 might be okay. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. I feel like $600 would, be, would still be at least a little high. But then the shipping, $60 for shipping. Who? What do you, what do you, what do you need sixty dollars for to ship a set that isn't even that big of a set? This is not like buying like the Grand, the Lionel Grand National from '74. This is a small set. This is literally the same size as my first starter set here, and they're they're asking sixty dollars to ship it. Are are you trying to pay for a down payment on a car or something? You don't need sixty dollars to ship a train set. It's it. I gotta move on. This this makes me mad. Here here's an egregious example here. Of, uh, just it's it downright boggles my mind how people would do this. So they're asking twenty dollars for a lot of a lot of train cars. You got a passenger car, caboose, some other freight cars. Transformer in here, and even a tender. So if you need, if you have a steam engine that needs a tender, boom, got one right there. It's twenty dollars, right? But this is where they get you. They are asking sixty-nine dollars for shipping. Why? Why would people? Why would you want? Why? Why do you need to charge sixty-nine dollars for shipping? Nice number but not nice price for shipping on stuff that isn't even that rare. I bet you you can go to the post office and they're not gonna say, this is gonna be $70 in shipping. Do you wanna, do you wanna pay that? No, this is not gonna be $70 in shipping. It, it just blows my mind how people try, literally try to scam other people into paying way more than what something is worth. Another error example here um, is, where is it? There it is. This is a Plasticville Virgin Pond unit. They're asking $12.95. But then the shipping, again, the, sh the shipping is more than the actual item itself. Now, I'll say this is a much less painful example. They're asking $15 for shipping, which it's less painful, but that still, that's where they get you. They're asking more, more money in shipping than for the actual price of the item. It's so stupid that people try to try to rip you off like that. It's, I don't get why people do it. It's just like, why, why? Why do you need to do that? And this, and here's a pretty, pretty bad example too. So this is a Lionel Holiday Tradition Express, a uh, special. Um, this is this is an early 2000s set. I think it might be 2000-ish. I don't know off the top of my head. It has 375 and it's got the box and everything. This isn't, isn't really the easiest set to find, so it's a and it looks like they do have some extra tracking here too, which I, I guess is okay on the price. But then they're asking $90 to ship it. It's just... It, it blows my mind on the, these prices for shipping. It's it's like not even, not even the price for the actual item is surprising me anymore. It's the price for the shipping. And... Again, this is now. I will say this is not something that just happens in Odin either. This happens in any sort of toy, Hot Wheels, um, any other model train scales, anything. 
people try to get you where they offer this amount of money, which looks reasonable for it, or too good to be true, and then they ask an outrageous price for shipping. It's just like, why do people do that? Why? You don't need, you don't need to charge $90 in shipping for something that really is, if you think about it, really is not that big. It's not like you're trying to ship a car for a full-size train. You're shipping a relatively small starter set. It's insane. And sometimes you see something on eBay here, and it just looks too good to be true. So there's this uh, OVH, MTH, uh, Sun Pacific. Uh, so, well, not even Southern Pacific, Southern set engine, and this is I, this is an early 2000s model. This is for the Ready Rail series, so this is semi scale. They're asking 99 cents, and then 672 for shipping. And now this is a uh, this is one where you have to bid for it, right? But honestly, this looks kind of suspicious because they have multiple things wrong in their listing here. So they say it's a Southern Pacific engine. It's not. It's a Southern engine. It's, okay, they got the 462 part, right? I'm looking at the description here. Let's read this description. It says, this OVH MTH Ready Rail Series Southern Pacific 462 Bantam Stream uh, 30 dash number is the perfect addition to your collection with a power type of AC that's ready to go slash pre-built diesel locomotives made of durable plastic material and features a wheel clip configuration 460. Analog control system and three rail two conductor rail system makes make it easy to operate with while the Southern Pacific corporate road name and transportation team add to its charm. Weighing seven pounds, this unit type locomotive is suitable for model railroads and train cruises. Add this to your collection today and enjoy hours of fun. There's, there's a lot of things that make this seem very, very suspicious. Um, they get details wrong on it, saying that it's a diesel locomotive. This is very clearly a steam locomotive. Um, they say it's plastic. I, I think this, this is most definitely die-cast metal. Because other than Marx and Lionel in the 70s, I don't think anyone now makes steam engines with plastic bodies. Well, I, other than like, you know, uh, like those really cheap, really, really cheap model trains you can get at the store for like 50 bucks. This is not that. This is a MTH engine. This is most, this is definitely going to be die cast metal. And on top of that, they say, oh, this, the power type is AC, ready to go, pre-built. It's... If a model train collector was to list this, they would, they would not put those details in because you can very clearly see what it is. And they're going to say, and then saying, with a power type of AC. Again, they're not going to say that. They're, they might say that in the item specifics, but not in the, but not in the description. And usually with OVH trains, it's, it's AC powered. The only exception is, go, really the only exception that I know of that's going to, where it's going to be DC, is if it's a, uh, the, engine from the MPC era in one of those DC starter sets. That's the only time where I'd say like, where I would say like, hey, this is DC powered. Do not buy this if you have a AC only layout. It's just, and then getting even just the, the road name wrong with saying it's Southern Pacific. This is very clearly a Southern engine, not Southern Pacific. Southern and Southern Pacific were two separate companies, and they were not one and the same. And it's just, this, this listing just seems so wrong, and on so many levels. So, what I will say is, 
watch out when you're buying stuff on eBay because it it just buying don't get me wrong buying eBay on trains is great. I've bought some stuff excuse me some Lionel stuff off of eBay and I and I it was great. Like my blue streaks set for example the engine I bought off eBay and for a great price. Um. What else? That Sakai boxcar that I have, bought that off eBay at a reasonable price. It's just, you have to, when buying stuff off eBay, you have to watch out and just be careful with what you're buying. With what you're buying. Because if you're not careful and you're not paying attention, you can end up buying something for way more than what it's actually worth. So. I just wanted to talk about that with you guys, um, so, yeah, with that, I'm going to say that's it for the video. If you liked what you saw, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below, um, share it with your friends and neighbors and whatnot, and that's going to be it for today, guys. This is going to be 10 Central 805, out.